Hello everyone, welcome to week two. In this video I'm going to show you what my expectations are for annotating a text. Before we talk about annotation, I want to talk about good reading. Most reading that we do is skimmed. We read quickly, it's not always the most efficient. When we're annotating and when we need to learn, reading requires close attention. Good reading is hard work. However, it's worth it. Reading skills are among the most valuable assets you will gain while in this class. Reading skills are very empowering. So what does it mean to annotate a piece of text? Annotation, or creating meaningful notes, ensures that we are actively reading a text rather than passively. So when we're passively reading, we're skimming. Words are going in one ear and out the other. Very little is being converted into long-term memory because we're reading quickly, passively. When we're actively reading, we are giving our full attention to the text. We're creating meaningful notes right on the page. So we read with a pen, a pencil, sticky notes. We mark important passages. Annotation is our opportunity to mark the most important passages in a text. It is our way of communicating with the text and bringing the ideas on the page to life. That's what we're doing when we're annotating. The ideas forming in your head are how we bring the concepts to life. Now, there is not one right way to annotate. I'm going to provide you with a framework of best practices for the purposes of this class. I'm going to outline my expectations crystal clear for you. You might have English teachers in the past who asked you to do it differently. You may have te English teachers in the future that ask you to do it a little bit differently. So there is no right way. But at the end of this slideshow, you will understand what I expect when I ask you to annotate. So why should we annotate? Annotations help us to capture main ideas, key concepts, and details of a reading. It's very helpful when we're breaking down a reading into those components. It also enables us to apply what we are reading to the world around us. We're constantly making connections when we're annotating. Connections between what we're reading to other readings that we've done in this class. Connections to readings that we've done in other classes. Connections to anything else in the world. We're constantly applying what we're reading when we're annotating. Another benefit of annotation is that it cuts down dramatically on study and review time when you return to the material. If you've annotated the text, then it's a huge time saver when you need to come back to remember the main ideas, key concepts, and details. This process greatly strengthens your reading comprehension. Before we annotate, we need to find a quiet place with no distractions. I would caution against music in general, but if it's soft and it's close to background noise, it can be very helpful. So don't put on a rowdy, headbanging soundtrack, but some classical music has found to be very helpful when annotating. If you're, if you're listening to music that's pulling your attention away from what you're reading, then it's too distracting. Look at the title before you annotate. Very good indication of the subject or method or what the story is about. Take a close look at the title when we're annotating first. Then we look at the author. If we're familiar with the author, it may help us make predictions about what we're about to read.
Also, before we annotate, we look in what it was published. So is this a book that was published by a publishing company? Is it an article that was written in a magazine? Would we be more likely to believe Living Mermaids, an amazing discovery, if it were published in Scientific American or the National Enquirer? Now, the Scientific American is a very prestigious academic journal where many scholarly articles and texts are published, whereas the National Enquirer looks like this. You see it on the grocery store rack as you're checking out outrageous headlines, not the most reputable company. So in what it was published really matters. Okay, so guidelines. What should you note in your annotations of fiction? These are specific to fiction. In the future, when we read nonfiction texts, informative informational texts, I may add a slide for you. For now, we're just talking about fiction. So we're looking for important plot details, main idea and supporting details, key terms, cause and effect relationships in the text, explanations, point of view, character names and traits, setting, symbols, themes, examples of literary devices, foreshadowing, irony, flashback, metaphor, personification, unusual sentence structure or language features, and don't forget that sometimes what is most important is the implied message. Sometimes what isn't there can be as important as what is there. This is an ambitious list. There's a lot to keep in mind when we're reading fiction texts. That's why it's important to have this handy when we're annotating. We will take a look together at some literary elements together to refresh our memory of what specifically I am looking for with regard to literary devices. When we're annotating, we're reading with a pen or a pencil in our hand. This really helps us stay focused and alert to what we're reading. We abbreviate, we maximize our, our efficiency by abbreviating using things such as brackets, stars, exclamation points. We also keep a list of characters and their key traits. A good place is inside the cover of the book. This is very helpful when, when our time to read novels arrives, which won't be right at first. We're focused on short stories, but during third quarter, when we're reading To Kill a Mockingbird, and fourth quarter, when we're reading Romeo and Juliet, a great place to keep a list of characters and their key traits is on a piece of paper, folded, used as a bookmark. That way we can add brief notes to it and refer back to it easily. Additionally, we're looking for patterns. What ideas do we see repeated in the text? What connections can we draw between these different concepts? When we're underlining and highlighting when we're annotating, we use this sparingly. Underline and highlight sparingly. We only underline and highlight a few words at a time. We never underline an entire passage. And we always provide an explanation note for ourselves when we highlight. I should never see something highlighted or underlined without a written comment or explanation from you. Too often we get a little excited when we're highlighting and underlining and there always needs to be a very specific purpose when we're doing that. And I want us to get in the habit of always adding a comment when we underline or highlight. The list of all the things we're looking for when we're annotating fiction is ambitious. I want you to do your best there. This is something we can do perfect every time. Never underline or highlight without providing a written comment or an explanation. 
At the end of the reading, bullet point key events as a summary. Even if it's just three bullet points, summarizing the reading at the end is very helpful. When I'm looking at your annotations, I want to see that you included comments as evidence of your thinking about the text. This ties right back into never underline or highlight without also adding a written comment or an explanation. This shows me that you are deeply engaged and thinking hard about a given reading. Provide comments as evidence of your thinking. Also, you should always pay attention to vocabulary. A strong vocabulary comes from reading, not from memorizing lists. We read to develop our, voca our vocabulary. We do not memorize lists with definitions. Our readings this year are going to include many, year, many words that are new to you. Mark these words. Anytime you don't recognize a word or you're fuzzy on the definition of a word, mark it. Try to determine the meaning from the context. Where is that word placed in the sentence? What came before that sentence? Read that word in its context and make the best possible guess you can. Then look it up. Confirm your understanding. If you're really puzzled and you cannot determine even a, a guess you are comfortable with, look it up. The internet is a valuable tool for quickly looking up words. Okay, so now we're going to apply this. We're going to annotate the stories in Google Classroom, The Kaha Bird and Godfather Death, two short stories. Remember, each time we highlight or underline, we must add a marginal note to explain why you highlighted the text. We must add a comment to explain why we highlighted. Read these two short stories carefully. Utilize your notes or this PowerPoint to guide yourself each time I ask you to annotate. I would go back to that list of things we're looking for with regard to fiction. If you haven't written it down already, go back and write that down. That way, as you're reading these, you know exactly what to reference as you're reading through. What am I looking for? You can glance back and forth to make sure that you're catching everything you possibly can. How to do this as a distance learning student. You can utilize the highlight and comment feature in Google Docs. Open the reading as a Google Doc, and then you can highlight text, you can add comments to text, that can be a very effective way to annotate completely digitally. Or you may print a copy of the story, complete the annotations by hand, and then scan in your physical annotations or take a picture with your cell phone. That way you have a digital copy that you can upload to Google Classroom. If you have any questions about my expectations for annotation, please email me. Thank you.